Hey guys, Slim Kirby here. Welcome back to more Let's Play Kirby's Dream Land 2. I'm back in the midst of level 6-2, and we're gonna get the rainbow drop first of all, like I said in the last video. Uh, with Kine, you can make it all the way over here, so you can get inside this door. If I can actually enter it. Come on, let's do this. And here we have the spark power-up, which is one of the two things we need for the uh, first part of the rainbow drop. Surely we've fought the squid many times before, so we should be nothing new to you. Come on, jump up, throw your star. Or just do that, whatever you want to do, because you're obviously the boss of yourself. Okay, get the star. And there we go. We get the spark power up. And because... I guess you get kind from here. Just go ahead and grab Gooey so you have some extra defense for this next part. And now we have to go back to that uh, water area, which is not hard to do. Which I believe is right here. There we go. And now we have to get Rick, the second part of this. So just go through here and we have to fight Rocky again, which you've already seen. Very easy to do with the uh, spark power up for sure. Then open up the bag, <coughs> and you should get Rick. So there we go, we have Spark and Rick, which is what we need, so let's continue. Watch out for that Waddle D. And now we can break open this uh, bag. And then we can get Koo! Hooray! So now we have the first part, now we have to go get the second part of this, which is what we need, which is over this way. You'll find a door, and here we'll find this guy, the Cutter Mini Boss. We can easily take him out with uh, the Spark Power Up. Just make sure you don't overkill him, though, when you actually finish him off, because you might accidentally, like, kill him with the spark when he didn't mean to, and dang it. Well, that's okay, because we can just go back in here and find him again. I guess one thing I could recommend is wait till he has two health left, then discard your power up and swallow the star and then spit it back at him. That should kill him off and also get rid of your power too, so... Yeah, I'll go ahead and do that. There we go. So now we have Cutter, and the last thing we have to do is we actually have to actually get to the door with the Rainbow Drop, which uh, is not too challenging, but watch out for the Gordos. You do not want to stupidly lose Ku or your power up here, so just make sure you do everything carefully and you should be fine. Oh god. Okay, well, that's fine. We got it back, and there we go. Rainbow Drop has been gotten. There's actually only one more rainbow drop we have left, because after World 6, there's only World 7, and then after World 7, we have the boss fights, and then we're done with this game, so, yeah. This game does not have too much longer to go. And we actually have 40 lives, too, which is also pretty cool. But for now, we need to continue, because we've wasted enough time in doing levels that we've already completed. And now we're going to go to a new level that we haven't seen before. And of course we're going to use Ku for a little while, because Ku is awesome. Yeah, after, uh, you know, Let's Play in this game, I'd say that Ku probably is my favorite animal buddy in this game. I really like Kain, but I think overall Ku is just more awesome in this game than Kain. Just a little bit, though. In Dreamland 3, it's hard to say, because I've only played through that game, like, all the way through twice. Uh, once for my Let's Play, and then another time for my, uh, Kirby Streamland stream event, which was, uh, held back in, I want to say, I think, oh, it was, it was the be very beginning of last year, 2007. Because I remember I did it, like, on January 2nd, so it was, like, it was supposed to be on, uh, in 2010, but... I didn't have enough time to do it, so I had to, uh, 
pulled it at the very beginning of 2011. But anyway, my point was I haven't played this game very much, or haven't played Dreamland 3 very much. But I'll play it again sh uh, shortly, though, because I, as I've said before, I do plan to do a replay of that game. But I do like the new partners they did add in Dreamland 3, because all of them are pretty cool. I freaking hate Rick in Dreamland 3, though, because... I don't know, he just seems like completely inferior to Nago the Cat, the uh, other land um, partner that they added in that game. That's just my own personal opinion, though. But anyway, that level is completed. That was a very short and sweet level. So now we're going to go on to level 4. <coughs> Excuse me while I have to cough. Even though I, like, uh, for those who watch my Pikmin 2 Let's Play... Um, I was actually sick for a little while, which is what kind of didn't really postpone the project, because I got, I had enough videos recorded in advance to last the entire cold, but, um, I still feel like I still have, like, a very small bit of my cold still, if it's, uh, not obvious from the way my voice sounds. I mean, like, I don't think I sound terrible or anything, but, you know, I do sound a little nasally, so I'm still trying to get over that, unfortunately. Hasn't gone as quick as I would like it to, but not much I can really do about that. Oh yeah, and for Captain Stitch, you can only hurt him when his spikes are off. Regardless if you have a power or not, so keep that in mind. He can be a pretty annoying boss. Especially when you're fighting them in close quarters like this. Oh god. He actually hit me right there without me realizing it. Okay, one more hit should do it. Why do I get the feeling that we're probably gonna get, like, Rick in the, uh, partner bag? Yep, I knew it. I don't know if that's random or if you did actually get Rick from that regardless. Okay, so we have a few rooms like this in this uh, level. So get ready for that. Stupid rock. That rock came out of nowhere. But yeah, the game feels like doing a little bit of repetition right now. Obviously, naturally. Dang it, I wish I could actually have used that cutter. Get the one up. Oh, then we also get hit by a Gordo, too, naturally. Oh god, speaking of Gordos. I think I mentioned this in my uh, Kirby Streamland stream video, but for those who weren't there, um, check out the video called, uh, shoot, I forget what it's called. I'll, I'll put a link to it in the video description, but it's like, <laughs> Gordo's Ultimate Journey or something? I don't know. But basically, like, basically it shows, like, Kirby's Adventure, and it shows, like, a Gordo that's, like, stuck in between the ground and a block. And then when Kirby gets rid of the block, the Gordo just, like, keeps going up and up and up in the sky until he's, like, deep in space. And then, like, he just keeps going, and it plays, like, the Land Before Time music while it's, you know, doing this. And eventually, like, eventually, after, like, several, several, several million miles of travel, it hits, like, an asteroid, and then it starts falling back down to where it was before... It's a, it's a really funny video. I, I kind of, like, spoiled the entire video by explaining it, but... 
still, it's it, it's funny every time I see it, regardless of knowing when it happens and what happens. So, uh, check it out. I for, again, I forget the actual name of it, but I'll link you guys to it in the uh, video description. Very hilarious video. It's really weird, like, it's been so long since I've played this game, but, like, I still remember, like, all of the rooms that look exactly like this. Like, I remember playing this when I was, like, really little and thinking it was, like, the coolest thing ever. And then, of course, in that last level where I had, like, those little Gordo sections, like, you have to jump in between them. Like, it's, it's kind of interesting, like, you know, looking at an old game that you used to play all the time as a child. And then after not playing it for a while, going back to it and being like, I remember this, I remember this. It's very, very nostalgic, that's for sure. I'm almost thinking about getting rid of Rick right here, because I'm getting kind of tired of using him. Well, regardless, I'm probably going to lose Rick in just a second anyway. Yep. Okay. Well, that's okay. Oh, shoot! Dang it! Ah! I didn't mean to open my mouth right there. Oh, well, at least I get to start with full health now. That was uh, one of my main cons- What the- I pressed the swallow button again. Okay, well... I had 41 lives anyway, so that was probably why that happened. Figures. Okay, what the heck? Why can't I freaking jump when I tell Kirby to jump? Okay, there we go. No! Dang it. Okay, here's the lesson. Do not jump in this part of the level. There's no reason to, and they'll only throw you back. Okay, looks like we have a little bit of a maze right here. Oh, God. Okay, these guys aren't too bad. They're only bad if you have animal friends with you. Oh god, come on. Well, this is not bad either. Just use your little spit bubbles to destroy them. I believe uh, this door right here is the actual one you need to exit from, but I want to check out all these doors first. That seems to be the case, anyway. Ah! And yeah, sure enough, this is the real door. I don't know how I remembered that. But yeah, there we go. Level 5? Or is that level 4? These levels are definitely getting longer, that's for sure. Okay, that was level 5, so now we have level 6, and we have the boss, then the boss minigame, and then I should be done with this world. Not sure if I'll start World 7 in this video or not. Dang it. This is a very annoying fight, doing it with wind. Okay, throw your star. Throw your star, not your little... Lightning zaps. Just throw your star. Thank you. And in here we have Rick again. Wow. This game keeps throwing Rick at me. I wonder why. I think I think it's because I said that Rick is probably my least favorite animal buddy in this game. That's why they're doing it. I don't think you actually see the animal buddies very much in the last world. This is kind of the last world where you actually utilize them for the most part. Because all the rainbow drops in uh, the next world, or, well, the last rainbow drop, doesn't require any animal friends. It only requires uh, power-ups. So yeah, I kind of feel like these guys are tossed to the side in the last world. 
Which is unfortunate because these guys are supposed to be like the main part of this game. But as usual, like I said in the first video, in the end it always seems like the powers are treated to be more important than anything when it comes to Kirby. That's kind of the way it's always been, anyway. Just from the way I see it. God, where does this maze go? This maze is kind of throwing me through a loop right here. Literally, quite literally, it is. Okay, I believe this is the way we need to go. Or maybe we have to go... Nope, this is right, I'm pretty sure. No, I was wrong. Okay, it was the next route. And I freaking hate that the enemies keep respawning. And there's a good there's a good part of that and there's a bad part of that. The fact that you're not ready for them is the bad part, but you know, when you want to get power-ups, like those enemies will always respawn too, so that's always nice. For the, but for the most part, I dislike how they respawn when uh, you go off camera in their range, I guess you could say. And you go all the way up. Okay, I want to get that Maxim Tomato. And there we go! Level completed. <clears throat> Excuse me once again. And we are ready for the boss level. Like I said in the last video, you guys should know who to expect for this boss fight. He looks kind of different at first, but when you see eyes and you see clouds, you generally know who it's going to be. Especially with attacks like that. So yes, we have Krako. Krako has returned in this game, and Rick is not helping me, so I'm going to discard him. Krako has some unique patterns at first, naturally because he's in the clouds at first. But uh, after we do this phase, he'll go back to the phase that we all know and love from him. He can be pretty tricky, though, I have to admit. So after one more attack, we'll go to his actual phase. The phase that we're definitely a lot more familiar with. Okay, we got rid of him. Watch out for him right here. Because if you touch him, you'll obviously get hurt. And there he goes, back to his traditional cloud form. All of his attacks are pretty much the same as you remember them. I don't think he has any like major attacks that are radically different or anything. So that attack, just make sure you duck right there and you should be fine. Dang it, not mean to get hit right there. I'm waiting for him to shoot off another cloud baby. Which he's not going to do. Oh, okay, he shot off two cloud babies. We get it. Obvious pattern is obvious. Oh, wow, I actually got two hits right there. That is definitely going to help me, but... Dang it! Ah! Thought I could swallow that guy, but I guess not. Okay, let's try that again. We have 41 lives this time, which sucks. But I'm not going to worry too much about it. I have to admit, this first phase is actually kind of more difficult than the second phase. That's the way it seems for me, anyway.
I don't know if you could swallow that. I'm pretty sure you can't. Although, who's to say? There could always be something that I'm missing with this fight. You never know. Okay, first phase done. Let's go back to the second phase again. Like I said, I definitely feel like this phase is a lot easier than the first one. Can't believe I missed him right there. Ah, okay. I should honestly just stay in the corner the entire time, because that's... Doing me a lot more good than moving around, that's for sure. Okay, got two hits on him right there. This is about where I died the last time, so... Doing a lot better this time, for sure. Ah! Okay, doing a little dip-down attack. Two more hits should do it. And there we go! Alright, Krakow's been defeated, and next video, we're going to be moving on to the last world of the game. This has been Slim Kirby, it's been Let's Play Kirby's Dreamland 2. See you guys next time. Later, folks.